So all these tiny black things are Hilasias. Let's just collect them because I'm going to educate you about them. Yeah, we're here to learn about moths, and these moths are actually very important for the environment because the Hilasias are super common. So they are actually some of the most important species. Just collecting all the Hilasia in here. Woo! In just a few minutes, I already have an insane amount. Let's see how many we can collect. Now don't worry, they're a little bit stressed, but this doesn't harm them. And um, besides, these only live for a few days. But if you want to learn about uh, biology of the insects here, you need to understand Hilasia. These Saturnids are very small and super abundant. Alright guys, just to see how insane the Hilasia are in this area. I'm going to release a few of them in this cage that I collected in only a few minutes time. Oh, see all the crazy skills coming out? That's the defensive hair. There you go. These are just some I just collected in a minute. And these are all... Most of them are males. And I think most of them are the same species too. And these are all Saturnid moths, believe it or not. These tiny things are like pests. And this is one of the most common Saturnid moths that you'll ever see in South America, the Hilasias. And there's many more of them. I could collect the whole cage full if I wanted to. Alright guys, this is what a Hilasia looks like. They are... Alright guys, this is a very important silk moth that I want you guys to learn about today for your small biology lesson. This is a Hilasia silk moth. I'm not even sure which species of Hilasia it is, but I'm telling you these are some of the most important silk moths that you'll ever find in South America. The genus is very big. I forgot, I forgot how many species there are in the genus. I think there's over a hundred species of Hilasia, maybe. And all of them are very hard to identify because most species are just straight black, straight brown or gray. And sometimes there are scriptic species who look the same and the difference you can only find it by dissecting them. They're also really, um, their success is enormous in South America. They are very widespread. And you can f find these in huge numbers. It's, these are probably some of the most numerous silk moths, at least here in Brazil. Now, which Hilasia species this is, I really cannot say at the moment. I need to have my identification guide with me. So this species is uh, gray, gray-black. Black abdomen. Some species have an orange abdomen. They also have defensive hairs, like irritating hairs. And if you touch them, it can be very itchy. They're caterpillars, they live in groups and can be very venomous. And I always wanted to raise some, but it's very hard to find females that will lay eggs. They're very cute, they do have very cute face. Very cute eyes. See that? So the Hilasias are very nice. And they are very numerous tonight. And just to prove a point, guys, just to prove a point, I am going to take a, a little jar and collect for five minutes all the Hilasia that I can see and then release them in a cage. And let me show you how many Hilasia there are. It's insane. <clears throat> Wow, that's crazy, isn't it? Just look at how many we have. Can you see how many? These are all Saturnids. And I think, in fact, most of them are males. Um, I think I see two different species. One species with an orange abdomen, one with a black abdomen. Let me show you some close-ups, because this is weird, huh? Now, here's just some of the males of the Hilasia. Actually, I think almost all of them are males, I'm not sure. It would be nice to have females, but females tend to be a bit rare. 
So these are all the Hilesia I collected in just a very short time. Just to prove my point. And it seems like, I think, whoa, could this one be a female? I'm not sure. It seems we have two species here, like one that has an orange abdomen, as you can see. And it would be nice if my camera cooperated. Ah, so this is the orange abdomen, Hilesia. They tend to have like a thick abdomen with hairs, and these hairs can be noxious. So this is the orange abdomen one. And I also notice there is another species here, it's more rare. This one has black hairs on the abdomen, can you see that? So I have to identify that later, so that's, I think at least, um, this is the black haired species. I have to look in literature. So these are very fascinating. And what's interesting is, um, it's actually kind of rare to get a female, despite the fact that males are so rare. But the females of Hilesia almost never fly, and when they do, they usually have no more eggs left. Unfortunately. Now when it comes to butterflies and moths, people always have a bias against common species. So when you talk to quote-unquote Saturnid or Sidmoth enthusiast, most of them can tell you everything about the Luna moth. They can tell you everything about the Madagascar moon moth, but they are, they are clueless about stuff like Hilesia. That's a bit backwards, because if you think about it, these common and overrepresented moths are actually more important. Uh, of course, I don't like to quantify organisms in terms of importance or value. All of them are important and valuable. But you have to think that species that are so common in the environment, so overrepresented, have a bigger impact than the rare stuff. But when it comes to butterflies and moths, there is often a bias where people are the most interested in the most beautiful and the most rare species, but very uninterested in the, just the black, brown, common stuff. But the black, brown, common stuff is for the, for the nature, for the environment, the most important. If you are an insectivore like a bird, you're not uh, snacking on rare moths all day. You're going to grab what's available and these things and I don't know if birds actually eat them, that's just a conjecture. But generally speaking, it's true, the most common, the most, um, the most prevalent, right? The one with the highest abundance species have the highest impact on the environment, right? Uh, let's come up with a, a silly analogy, right? Um, for example, if... I don't know, take something like grass right like if grass disappeared the world would have a bigger problem than if like a rare brazilian orchid just disappeared despite the fact that most people prefer the rare orchid over simple grass and yes i know grass is not one species guys grass is many species it's it can't be generalized like that but i hope you understand the metaphor you can apply it to something else as well. Like if um, common sparrows or crows disappeared, it would be devastating to nature. Whereas, um, I don't know if a rare threatened uh, species of, I don't know, hummingbird disappeared, it would be sad, but it would have a smaller impact. And of course, it's not a Pokemon game. It's not a contest about which organism is the most is the most important, you know, which, oh, the most important animal. It's a very human trait to want to quantify everything just in terms of, imp you know, of uh, value. Sometimes value is hard to quantify, and I think every organism is worth protecting and conserving. But it is a little double to think of people who want to be silk moth experts but they really don't know about the species like Hilesia. Yeah? yeah, that's like you're, you're missing the basics. This is literally the most common and important stuff. Okay guys, a quick interruption. But if you want to learn about moths in South America, it is very important to understand the genus Hilesia. 
because they are some of the most common silk moth species throughout all of South and Central America. Not just that, they are also one of the most diverse genera of Saturnidae or Emperor or silk moths. There are about 100 species of them known to science and no doubt there are still many undescribed and undiscovered species of them, because not many people study these little creatures. Perhaps it's the fact that the majority of them can be plain brown, grey or black, which makes it less appealing for people to take a close look at them. Not just that, a lot of species are hard or impossible to tell apart without DNA testing or dissecting them. They can have very complex species complexes. However, a number of species is distinct looking, and some of them can have very interesting or forms or pretty colors in some cases. Stinging moths. That's right, the adults of Hylacea have venomous hairs in some cases that can strongly urticate your skin. Most moths are not considered to be harmful if you just touch them, but Hylacea are an exception, because some of these moths are venomous as adults. The hairs that they have on their abdomens can be hollow and inject irritating agents. Sometimes, if the moths are very common, they spread so much hairy scales that it becomes hard to breathe for people. These hairs are also used to cover the eggs that they lay. The female spreads them all over the egg cases so other animals don't bother to touch them. They are dangerous little creatures, especially the caterpillars. All of them are armed with venomous spines and some species can hurt quite a bit. Do not touch them. The host plants of Hylacea are really numerous and hard to generalize and many of their life cycles are in fact still unknown to science as well. Very very interesting. Now honestly, if I wanted to, I could collect more of them as well. Like this is just a few minutes of effort. I could literally go to the moth trap and just... I could collect 10 times more. Well, maybe not 10 times. But at least double the amount. Because more of them are still arriving. The night is... It's right like around 1 o'clock right now at night. And the Hylacea's are just coming in in massive numbers tonight. There you go. So yeah. So interesting to know is that the larva, the caterpillars of Hylacea are actually very venomous. Uh, they can be very painful if they, are, if, you're, if they are touched. And maybe that explains also some of their success. Because they are masters of survival and... Not all species of them are pests, but some of them can be major defoliators. Of course, this is a generalization. And some people don't like that they can eat food crops. Some species can eat stuff like uh, guava, mango. Um, some of them can be quite generalist or e even affect commercial crops. I think they can also be defoliators of eucalyptus which is an introduced invasive plant here so that you're, you're getting a native species that's becoming overabundant because they can feed on an introduced invasive plant, right? Hylacea, these are not invasive. I'm pretty sure these are native. They're really cool moths though. I like to see them as the, the ants of the Saturnids, if that makes sense. It totally probably doesn't make sense. Probably will find this weird. Oh yeah, and another thing is they are so small, they only have a lifespan of a few days. So I'm gonna release all of them back into nature, of course. And it's funny because we all have males, like all of this, I'm pretty sure all of this is male. And if you touch them, they do a thread pose where they curl the abdomen. It's really kind of neat. Let's see, do we have any females at all? No. So this shows how rare the females can be. The females are out there, but they hardly ever fly. And this is why you rarely see them in the insect hobby as well. There's actually a big hobby market for silk moths, for Saturnids. But you almost never see anyone raise Hylacea's. And that's a good thing because they are pests. Now, I'm not a big fan of regulating uh, the hobby and telling people that every species is a pest and you're not allowed to keep exotic animals. But these, in my opinion, these moths should not be exported to other countries because they are a biosecurity threat. Because they are major defoliators. They have venomous larvae. As you can see, they are highly overpopulated, successful survivors. 
And we could end up with a situation that's almost like the formerly known as the Gypsy Moth, I guess. Although they changed its name. Uh, now it's the Spongy Moth or the Devourer Moth, if, if you will. Limantia dispar. An introduced species in the United States of America that causes $350 million of damage per year to the native forest. It destroys and defoliates native oak trees just because somebody introduced this moth to the United States. So introduced moth species can be very harmful. And I agree stuff like atlas moths are not pests. Okay, they are not pests and outlawing them makes no sense. But when it comes to these Hilasias, I support them being banned. Like you need a permit, this is dangerous stuff. These are very potent potential pests and I'm getting annoyed that my camera doesn't focus right now starting to be quite annoying oh there you go this keeps focusing on the dumb background for some reason stop that oh, well there you go search cool animals Ooh, that was a lot of Ooh, there was a lot of work. <laughs>